Okay, so we're recording. So again, this is the part three of the Hugo mini course. We are talking about templating. We did a, an initial templating uh, overview last month and I'm gonna continue with that project that we started. So I'm gonna hop over to my command line and let's see here if I can actually make this something that people can see. Is this, that, is that big enough? Yeah, people can read that? Okay, nice. So this is our project. And basically what we have going on here is we have a Hugo server running. And on that server, we have this kind of ugly looking website that has the home page and has two links to internal pages. If you click to those internal pages, they, they have the same template that has not taken any variable value. So they're just like a static page there. But we just wanted to show some of the template inheritance that you can do. Let me start this so I don't go completely over time. And so basically what I want to do is I want to structure this so it's a little bit more usable in like a real world context. So we have this basic template. And if you remember correctly, we have this, this home page. It's the underscore index that markdown page. And that is looking to a specific template in the hierarchy to display. So one of those templates could be an index.html page or a home.html page. Since we don't have either of those, it's looking over here to this list.html page. And since that's appearing in this D underscore default folder here, basically any type of content on the site will look to that if it cannot find a template in the hierarchy to display it. So over here, we have the uh, actual markup for this list page. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just going to add a framework here called Bulma, which will allow us to style some of these things a little more simply without having to write any of our own custom style code. So if I add this here, we can start using that, that CSS in order to actually structure some of this stuff without writing a bunch of code and make this process a little quicker. So one of the things I wanna do here is I'm just going to actually abstract this list of items, pages on this home page here into an actual like navigation that we can put across different pages. So the first step I'm gonna do in doing that is I'm actually going to just create a nav here. I'm gonna close that off. And I'm gonna make sure, actually I gotta make sure it has a couple specific classes. So let's just, since I don't know Bulma that well, I'm just gonna copy and paste these. We wanna make sure our, our body has the has navbar fixed top class to it. So basically what that's gonna do is it's going to push content below the fixed header, the fixed uh, main navigation. And then we have a nav bar that will be fixed below that. So we'll grab some of this markup here. And so in our nav, we will say class. So navbar is fixed top and has a shadow. And then in here, we can actually put some of these items. So I'll grab this unordered list and I'll put it inside of our nav. I'm actually going to get rid of the unordered list part of it. And I'm actually going to get rid of the list items and just have a bunch of links here and save this. And let's see what we're working with here. Okay, so you can see that now we have this kind of nav bar across the top here. We have these links in here. And so we can come in, we can add a couple of different markup to our list to make sure that it appears in the way that we want. So basically I'm adding a wrapper div here around this for loop. So it, in Hugo, it uses these go templates and the way that you loop through items is through this range. It's basically a for loop, right? So we're saying, for uh, all the pages of type page, print out the permalink for that page and the title for that page. So that's giving us that list. And if I put it in here and I make each one of these a, I believe it's a nav bar, or is it a menu item? A nav bar item. we can actually come back here and you can see that 
we are starting to have something that looks like a navigation here. So let me just complete this by <clears throat> adding some markup for the actual uh, homepage. We don't have an icon or anything like that, but you can use your imagination. I'm gonna use a, a standard link here. If I save that, okay. So you can see what we're, we're kind of doing here, right? So we have now a navigation that can go in between pages. One thing you're gonna notice is if we go to the page, we lose that navigation because this is a different template. So to illustrate what I'm doing here is we're using two different types of templates. The list template is for aggregate pages. The home page is considered one of those aggregate pages. And then the single pages, this about and this contact page, they look to this single HTML page. So since we haven't added any of this markup to that page, if we're gonna look at it individually, it has its own HTML structure and it's not reusing any of that. So that's not gonna be great, right? We don't wanna have to add a menu to each one of those pages because if we had a site with many different pages, we'd have to go back and we would actually have to like adjust menu links if we ever change one of those links and you have to do it across all different pages. And then you're doing like search and replace. So that, that's obviously not a, a good thing to do. So if we come back here and actually I'm just going to wrap this whole thing in one last container. I'm gonna give it a container class. And I'm just going to make sure that goes around this here. And I'll save that. Okay, so now you can see that it has these kind of like general gutters on the side, so it all kind of falls with, within that content. Is, is anybody unfamiliar with what I'm doing with these classes and how like Bulma works? It's, it's like any other CSS framework you might work with, um, Bootstrap or Zurb Foundation, if you're not familiar with that. So basically, those styles are predefined through this CDN that we're, we're calling out to, this, this bulma.min.css. And as long as we use those classes in our markup, it's going to actually change the layout of our site. So I've gone through, we've added those, we have a basic nav bar here. Well, how do we abstract this into a form that can be used across many different pages? The way that I do that is in this default folder, I'm gonna create a new file and I'm gonna call it base of .html. And now, the thing I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna grab this whole markup that we wrote here and I'm going to cut this out. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to paste that into our base of file. Let's just take a look at what goes on here. So it looks pretty similar. Now what's happening is this is now looking to the base of for its, its template here. And what we can do is we can actually start making this a little more dynamic. So the way that Hugo does this is it, it has this idea of block content. So you can basically define a block region within this template and then have the sub templates that feed into it, define the actual like variables and, and content that goes into that, but it all get, gets wrapped in that, that main base of template. So you get all the things like, the, the CSS library that we're pulling in, all the metadata, um, the nav bar, and, and like if you had a footer and things like that, you could, you could put it into the space of template and then have the content appear that way. So let's just show what that might look like here. So I'm gonna grab where we have this body section. So you can see this body here. And I'm going to take both of these pieces of content and I'm gonna cut those out. And I know this is a little bit hard to read probably because of the nesting here. And maybe I can just fix that real quick. Just get this going like that. A little easier to read. And basically what I'm gonna do is in here, I'm going to put a block and then you can name it whatever you want. I'm gonna call this content, for instance. I'm gonna pass the context and I'm going to end my block. What this allows us to do is now inside of our other templates, like our list template, for instance. And actually, the real reason that was still displaying is because I never saved this file that I cut all this stuff from. Um, but what I can do now is I can actually start defining things within this block and, and that will you that will um, this index page will go to the list template. It will say that it realizes it's a defined block and then it'll insert whatever's in here into that base of template. So if I come in here and I just say define 
content and I end it, I can start putting things like the title and the body back in there. And so you can see that this is now working. Let's just make sure that it's definitely the stuff that we're adding here. I'll put test in there. Okay. So now you can see that since we define this block, as we actually uh, go to that page, we go to the index content page. It looks to the list template because the home page is of type list. And it finds in here that it's defined a block. It takes this content within this defined section and it renders it inside of where it is put into the parent template here, where we put it down here. So now what we can do with this is we can actually go through here and we can do the same thing. We can define other templates to use similar sections so it gets that wrapper. So just, just to look at this again one more time, if we go to the about page, again, it says this is a single page. We go to the contact page you know, this is a single page. So there's not much going on there. You lose the navigation. Let's, let's add that back in here. So let's go to our single.html page and let's get rid of all this. And let's just define another block, define our content again. Let's end it. And let's just say still a single page template, save this. And now if we were to navigate to these, okay. So a couple things are happening here. We are losing our navigation, uh, these, these different links here, but we're keeping this other stuff. So let's just take a look at that. Okay. If I come into the base of template, we have this structure. Okay. So it's again, so this comes back to like the context aware um, properties of Hugo. So this page is, is different than your homepage when you're there. So I think the way that we fix this, and again, live coding can bite me in the butt, but if we, if we give it the context here that this is the site pages, I believe that will fix this. Okay. So a couple things have happened here. When we go to the internal pages, you can see these are using the single page templates and the home page is using the home page template, but they all are getting these links. But one more thing is happening here is we're getting this home page now, right? So Hugo is having trouble distinguishing between these single page uh, markdown files and then this index home page file. So how would you filter that out? Uh, it has a nifty little thing here called regular pages. So if we change this from pages in the site context to regular pages, and we save it, you see that that's now filtered out. So that's really helpful. That works in any kind of content type. So for instance, right now we only have pages, but I think we have enough time to look at another example, just like a basic content type, like a blog post. Each one of those has the idea that it's gonna have an index or an aggregate page, right? So if you go to the blog page, it's gonna have many blog posts listed. If you click on any one of those individual pages, it will show you that specific page. So the index page is the one that lists everything out. And then the individual name pages is the actual blog page that you're going to. So if you ever want to filter out that index page in your list, you can just use regular pages and they'll, they'll filter out the index automatically. And we could actually, right now we could simplify this. So this was an example of that we did at the last, the end of the last talk that I did where we specifically wanted to look at a certain type of content. Since we only have one piece of content here, we could actually just, do this and it would show all pages of content. So this, it's the same thing, but as soon as we add another content type, you'll see why that might be an issue. And let's just do that real quick. So in here, in my content folder, I'm going to add a new folder called blog posts. And in that blog post folder, I'm going to add a new file called index dot markdown. And again, that is the landing page for the blog post. And then we can add a bunch of different blog posts like post one dot markdown and oops, add another one called post two dot markdown. And then let's just make sure that we actually have some of information in here. So again, remember this concept of front matter for now, we're going to keep it pretty minimal. We're going to call this all blog posts. 
this index page is going to look to a list template and we're going to have the post one. We're going to just name this post one, save that post two, po oh, title post two. Okay. So now a couple things are going to happen. One is since we change our filter here to actually not, let me see if I can get over there, to not filter out different types of content, it should probably display all the different content on the site, right? So it doesn't know that it's looking for just basic pages versus blog posts. So you can see that our things have been added here uh, to our main menu. We could go back here and we could actually add this back in where we say, okay, we'll only give us the type pages and only give us the regular pages and it goes back to giving us like a main navigation there. Um, and then we could come in here and we could actually do something very similar. So maybe on the, um, the actual homepage here, let's go to our list. We want to say, well, check out our blog. And we come in here and we say, give us all type of blog posts. We save that. And let's range where site pages, blog posts. I'm like, Check out our blog posts. Anyone see what I'm doing wrong here? That's interesting. Well, um, we have four minutes left. I don't know what I'm doing wrong in that specific example. I'm trying to just display, and, I, and maybe I'm doing it on, I'm in the index, or I'm, in the, I'm in the list. Oh, wait, wait, I'm on the contact page, that's why. I was on the wrong page. So here's our blog post, here we are. So again, so since I'm not using regular pages, so it's hard right now because this is such a simple example that the, index, the inside pages kind of look like the homepage. Obviously you could build this out. Now that we're on the homepage and you can see from the URL here, that's the easiest way to tell well, besides this. Um, you can see it has the check out our blog. It has three blog posts here. Uh, we could come back in here and we could change this back to regular pages, filter out that index page if we want, save it and it just, displays our blog post pages. Now, one last thing to note before I, I give it up for any questions that we might have is, notice when we go into these, these are still giving the single page template. So what's happening here is since there is no specific blog template defined here, it's looking to the single page template here. We could create another, oops, if I knew how to use my keyboard, we could create another folder here called blog posts, posts. And inside here, we could create a child node called single.html. And if we took that and we edited this, we said diff template. We should see something, you know, um, I think, you're right, I put it in the default, thank you. Moving the thing out of the default folder, yep, you don't want it nested in there. Let's put it here. Let's see what happens here. Let me just make sure I have that right. Yes, thank you. Um, so yeah, so now you can see how you could like have a specific page for your basic pages, uh, a specific template for that, but you could have a different template for your individual blog posts. I know that's kind of basic, but in these, Tutorials, you don't have a lot of time. Does anyone have any questions on any of that before we move on to our future presentation? Okay, people got it. Well, thank you very much.